All right, we're back, and we're going to freaking build something this time. That being said, the timing couldn't be worse, because round one, we are going to lose. <laughs> and based on... Yeah, please, 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 true to life, let art imitate life. I mean, life imitate art. Oh, we will lose this round. That's okay. Um, we're probably going to lose the next round, too, because we have two possums frozen, which do not help our lizards. In fact, let's bail on that. I would settle for a faint trigger. That's nice too. But how about a faint trigger? You're gonna turn me into the dang joker, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> All right though, okay. So first two rounds, hey, it's a small price to pay to start a little bit down to really ramp it up. Starting right now. A faint trigger you shouldn't have. Because now I ain't going to let you hear the end of it. Now, this lizard should become unstoppable. If he dies in a one-for-one -one trade, I'm going to cry. But it's not going to go down like that. It's not going to... Oh, but we, we are going to win this one. Holy cow, I knew it. Okay, we're so back. You need garlic, which doesn't exist. You need meat... So you can trade more than favorably. Interesting setup we've got here. I'm going to say no to the jellyfish. I'm going to spread out the buffs here just so we can level up next turn. I feel like leveling up on the subsequent turn is always more meaningful and I'll, I'll feel content with my draw. Now don't screw me on this one. <laughs> no faint trigger. You know what I'm thinking. Friend summon. Copy this pet's food perk to it. Tomo, how do we work with that one? How do we get a big whale shark? We could just buy perks. Where there's like weakness involved as well. Like if we could get a microbe or something. What are you? Axolotl, of course. Tomo, get out of the cords, man. It's, it's getting a little crazy, okay? Do you hear the static? No, you don't. It's just me. I was telling the stream today. This is, I swear it's real. I'm streaming. I'm on top of a rug. Tomo is a cat. He just had a haircut. He's generating a lot of static electricity. When he comes over here and I pet him, I start hearing static in my ear, which makes me think I'm about to die in some kind of electrical fire. <laughs> it's funny until it isn't. Um, I don't think we want either of these. But maybe this is like... If we don't have anything else to do, at least you could take some stats for now. Because if we're being honest, the lizard is not going to get the job done forever. If it's even getting the job done right now. That's a good buff. I'm, I, dude, I'm, I'm here in the static and it's driving me insane. <laughs> I am going crazy right now. It sounds like there's little lightning bolts in my ears. We're all going to die. Um... Friend gained ailment. Give it rice. I'm like, dude, if I could just find a way to give my whale shark ailment, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> I guess weakness or ink. Then he would get rice and he'd get even stronger. For now, I'm feeling not so stupid. You know what? Take the stats. Take the money and run. We're still beating hippos. This is a positive for society, and thus it's a positive for us. Holy cow, I can't believe how well this is going. Level me. I think you gotta throw a scorpion out here. And then just don't get sniped. Maybe we could start... It's a little crazy. Maybe we could start buying cans. Forget about the bison. I'm sure it could be an important part of the squad, but we've, we've over-leaned on it in a way that has not been conducive to our success. Let, let's start trying new things just to break the hold that the bison model has on my brain. Like, can me? Can me once more? The nurse shark exists just to be ballast until we can pivot to something that's 
much more likely to lead to our success. Hopefully, don't freaking kill me, bro. I'll settle for a draw. Come on, roll me. It's, it's chocolate round. That's a huge get. I feel like the right thing to do is not buy perks for the whale shark until we get one more level on it. And you're probably gone next, so let's not worry about you. In fact, I might even sell you. Get a monkey to buff the scorpion. We'll think about it, okay? We'll think about it. I feel pretty good about this for now. Like, I think this is the best run I've had this weekly, which is a sad story. How about some chocolate on my whale shark? How about some chocolate? Because if we don't buff it for a few turns, it becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy. We haven't buffed it for a few turns. Ergo, it's not good enough to buff anymore. anymore. Ergo, yada, yada, yada. We're like, oh, this thing's useless. I'll never take it ever again. Two chocolates, though? Bro, I'm sorry to say it. Two, two chocolates are going straight to the ostrich's dome piece next turn. The whale shark's no good, man. You'd have to be an idiot to take it. Oh, no. Okay, sniping is what is like the number one thing our team is bad against. So just accept it. That's the, in a healthy meta, some teams are gonna beat your team even if your team's built nicely. I'll go four squatted, I don't care. We probably could have thought this through, but look at all the buffs we're getting, bro. Look at all the buffs we're getting. Let's go. I don't think we're freezing any of them. On that, well, we have to reroll once. Keep the chocolate. Leave the cannoli. I don't know. The, the electric shocks are going to drive me crazy. Tomo, do you want to be on, on camera here, buddy? Listen, I love my son. I'd also love to pet him, like, on the sofa after dinner time. He's not really interested in that. But, like, the seven hours that I'm down here streaming or recording, he's like, you got to pet me right now. We could come to a compromise, man. I'm just trying not to die like, uh, I can't think of anyone famous who's been electrocuted to death. My only electrocution-related anecdote is that I love videos. I don't ever do this to your kids, but it is funny. The, the problem is the joke is on your kids, but it's funny for everybody else, which makes you a bad parent. It's really funny when there's videos of like kids helping their dad, like they're holding a flashlight at a circuit breaker while their dad's doing some like pseudo electrical work. And then the dad goes, ah, 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 ah. And then the kid goes, oh my God. And then it turns the dad obviously is not being electrocuted. He's just joking, but, but it is funny <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Let's not lose sight of the fact that that is pretty humorous, okay? Yeah, they shouldn't be doing it. Everybody knows that. And yet, realistically, I don't think you need this anymore. We'd, we'd be better to invest in the foods directly. This scorpion's gonna get us there, bro. Don't doubt it, don't doubt it. They got their own scorpion. That's got a sting. Never mind, we're so back. I think we don't even have to play around the ostrich anymore. We can just let the ostrich roll. Now we're talking. Forget about that whale. And then play around the ostrich. Less like it's the be-all, end-all. More if it's like, it's a nice thing to have. This walrus can go. This walrus with a one-up. Oh, baby. Okay, I realized it, it worked, but I forgot that this dude's just gonna eat the death touch. On the one hand, I'm like, Pog, 2-2 two, two buff, or 4-4 four, four buff. <laughs> but on the other hand, I'm like, bro, what the heck? I think I'd rather have you just kill an enemy in one hit. But what do I know? He's getting pretty freaking stacked, though. No doubt about that. Seven wins. 
We got the space for two losses. Pretty big scorpion too. Just just give it to the... Well, I'm, I'm Now I'm wondering who's going to even benefit from the death touch. I guess it, it, overriding on the ostrich is not the end of the world. Come on, please, come on. We'll take that. We'll take the draw and stay in the game. Buff me. Buff me. You getting the 50-50 and then getting death touch would go insane. Thank you. Thank you. And then that's pretty good. That's probably it for the ostrich, right? It doesn't need any more help. Walrus is, is too big to fail at this point. I lived. You didn't. This seems positive for, for us and therefore the world. Wow, what a... I thought we were going to win that for sure until the hoopo bird was... It's got hands for real. Ostrich doesn't need our support anymore. I don't know who needs our support. Why, why do we have this chocolate frozen, man? I guess it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to have the option of having three death touch come out. At some point, I think we got to dump the monkey maybe for something with like a faint trigger. Oh, brother, two ostriches <laughs> that both have death touch? You son of a gun, I gotcha. I got you to draw me. My mind's so off the hinges, I'll believe you. That's why I'm gonna let you go. I'll give you three seconds to get your no good lion four flush took us out of my office before I pump you full of lead. One, two, ten. <laughs> you, you ever see Home Alone? It goes crazy when you have norovirus. That's all I'm gonna say. So do you, though. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> A little bit. Well, you know what? We're in a pinch, brother. It looks like we're going the distance in this one. We might as well embrace insanity. It's already embraced us. Let's start building up a second ostrich. Not to an owl team, please. I beg of you. There we go. This is where we're starting to move the rock up the hill again. Freeze tier fives and better. Thank you. Chocolate. Chocolate. We'll buy this then. I don't know if this can work, but I also have a hard time believing it can't. Shows you all I know about Super Auto Pets. Like, their team is better than mine, but is it? Yep. <laughs> That's interesting. Gain perk, friends get plus one, plus one, double in battle. Interesting. I hadn't considered this animal as actually having a purpose. Turns out maybe the devs knew what they were doing. Really want to see chocolate, though? How about some chocolate? How about some chocolate? No chuck. None, none chocolates. How about a little bit of this? I believe you. But my Tommy gun don't. What a series of films. And by series, I mean the two of them that are actually... Well, really, like, I know this is not a popular take necessarily. Lots of people in the millennial age category would disagree with me on this one. Home Alone 1. Holiday classic, one of the, the great Christmas movies. Home Alone 2, fun movie, um, too long. I'm normally, I don't care about the length of a movie. I'm just saying it's a little... They, they, took off, they took on more than they could chew in Home Alone 2. There's too many plot elements happening simultaneously. It's not that it's confusing, it's just like, I, I'd like it if it was a tighter sort of like revenge flick between Kevin McAllister and the, the Sticky Bandits. Instead of what ends up happening where it's like you got the whole, all the hotel stuff going on, which is great because you get to experience it. Fair enough, fair enough, nine wins. We lost to a sheep, that's got a sting. I'm never gonna complain about experiencing more Tim Curry or even more Rob Schneider in his younger days. I will always complain about more Rob Schneider 
from basically age 26 onwards. <laughs> when did Deuce Bigelow come out? From around that era. I'm gonna try this. I know it's a little crazy. Let's be a tired, let's be a tropical soup. But it's just a little too much, you know? And all, I know we've been through it 10 times before, but Kevin McAllister, in the first movie, very sympathetic character. Be careful what you wish for, kid. Kid wishes for his family to disappear, and then they do. Then he really, one year later, one year later, 365 days later, he wishes for the same thing again, and he doesn't get left home alone. He gets on the wrong plane, but once he arrives at the, at the New York airport, even though his family's going to Miami, he says, excuse me, what city is that outside? And the lady goes, New York. He goes, New York, and then he proceeds to live it up. He was not left home alone. This time he is like more than an accessory to his own home aloneness. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Kevin McAllister, you just got put on notice. In the first movie, there's nothing he could have done, right? The family unplugged their alarm clocks and then they left without him because they thought that the neighbor's kid was him. There are a lot of distractions in the morning. I'm sure we can all relate, but at the same time, you gotta make sure your kid's there before you fly to Paris. Interesting. Let's try this. I, I think we could build a team around a hoopo bird. The idea of a hoopo bird surviving. Like living long enough to make it into our endgame squad. Also, the stuff that he does to the, the sticky bandits in Home Alone 2, as we've touched upon myriad times before, he does take, it becomes like a little sadistic. Like he's gaining too much pleasure out of it. He's doing more than he has to do in the name of self-defense. And I understand why, you know, he doesn't want them to ruin Christmas for the kids at the children's hospital who are going to be getting all of the revenue raised from the toy store in the holiday season. But still, that doesn't give you the right to like... I mean, he basically lured the sticky bandits into that brownstone and then inflicted lethal injury upon them multiple times. Dropped bricks on their head from three stories up. Marv took like four of those straight to the dome piece. Marv fell three stories through the floor onto a concrete basement subflooring. Marv got electrocuted so much you could see a skeleton. That's a classic that always gets the people laughing. Um, Harry is lit on fire by a toilet full of kerosene. They are both crushed against a wall by a tool chest that was pushed down the stairs. Like, this is just... This is some nightmarish stuff. In the first movie, it was all in self-defense. Was there a little bit of a twisted sense of pleasure for Kevin McAllister? He clearly took pleasure in it, but the wet bandits should not have come into his domicile if they didn't want the smoke. But the sticky bandits, they didn't... They got lured into the domicile. It's a slightly different situation, legally speaking. Look at this sniping team, man. We send it. And then Home Alone 3 through 25, we don't talk about that. They're dead to me. Note to self, sniping, very effective in the early game. Maybe not gonna get us anywhere in the late game, but all we have to do is get a couple of wins maybe in the late game instead of having to get all of our wins in the late game like we normally do. Let's send it. Let's send a level two links out there early. Friend gain perk, give it permanent plus one, plus one. I just, for me personally, I don't see that working, but what do I know? What do I know? Not, not, not that much in the whole scheme of things. Five wins. Feeling good, eating good in the neighborhood. You know, I've never been to an Applebee's. You know what annoys me is that people who have eaten at Applebee's will be like, you don't need to, don't worry about it. But you don't get to say that, that's Applebee's privilege. How do I know? It might be my favorite restaurant of all time. 
I don't mind microwaved food that tastes bad. So that, for the behind the scenes viewers, that part I was telling a joke. That being said, me speaking frankly, but still a little sarcastically, because I don't, I don't honest, I, it might be hard to believe. You can bring your own bias into this if you want. It might be hard for you to believe. I genuinely don't have that high of an opinion of myself. I think I have healthy self-esteem, but I don't think like, I don't think my job is hard or that I'm amazing for doing it or that I'm the best person on the planet. I just think like I'm a normal guy. Hi, Tomo. Hi, hi, buddy. I know you just pooped. Hi. But I do think I'm at the forefront. Maybe not the exact leading edge. I'm at the forefront of like a... I don't know. Maybe forefront's not the right word. I'm part of what I hope is maybe a growing philosophical lifestyle movement in the world. Which is that... I'm, I think I'm done with the relentless pursuit of searching for the best. At least when it comes to consumer goods, food in particular is a big one, restaurants, etc., etc. I'm embracing midness, okay? That's what 2024 is going to be like for me. Tackling midness, embracing midness. What do you mean by this? It's an extension, or perhaps it's... Sorry, I can't talk with this cat staring at me, dude. He's freaking me out. I, s I see you, buddy. Good poop, I'm assuming. Good poop. Millennial Gen Z culture in Vancouver. Hey, there's a great new brunch spot just open. You go to that brunch spot. No, that brunch spot's mid. You got to go to this brunch spot. No, don't go to that brunch. They'll go to this spot. They got a better eggs Benedict. Yeah, but the line up there is so long. You got to go to this place. That's got, they got even better eggs Benedict and the line is even longer. You know, it just like it goes on and on and on forever. Last six months or so, I've really embraced being okay eating at a six out of 10 restaurant. Not looking up a restaurant's reviews on Google until after I've eaten there to validate, reinforce, or rebuke my opinion of said restaurant. Someone asking, hey, where do you want to eat tonight? And me saying, I really don't care. They suggest a bad restaurant. If that would make you happy, let's go. I've had all the, the we've... But the, the ramens and the bobas and the, we've made a croissant mixed with a donut and the Vietnamese iced coffee and the Korean fried chicken and it's all great. But it puts you on this hedonic treadmill where, you know, you, it just, everything you have is better than the last thing you had but you don't derive any more joy from it because you're so used to constantly having your senses beset on all times by the maximum amount of stimuli that can legally be put into your system. We're going 90s mode, Okay. We're not buying things from Amazon because it's annoying to break down the boxes. We're buying them from stores where they break down the boxes for you and then they put it on a shelf. We're eating at local restaurants that have inexplicably been around for 60 years even though the food is only kind of okay. And we're taking pride in supporting our local community, okay? I'd love to do something with you, but I, I just, I can't, I can't. There's no more toys, brother. Oh no, I mean, he's floundering. <laughs> you can see he's losing confidence. No, 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 you're losing confidence. You're losing, you're the one who's out of order. Try it like this, try it like this. What if the sniper team can still sustain itself? What if the sniper team can still, what if the sniping team, because we're about to get a level three links, what if it can still sustain itself? Blow these teams up, bro. Blow them up. Blow them up. Oh, get blown up. Okay, that takes us to seven. We can do this. You're coming out and getting buffed next time. But, by, but you're really going to lose a walrus to make that happen? That's a spicy choice. <laughs> That's a spicy choice, man. That's a tough one. It seems like it's important to have a walrus to get over the really big enemies that aren't going to die to sniping, in which case we say no to a lionfish. 
Okay, how are we going to scale this squad then? Level 2 Walrus or Level 3 Tiger? Level 3 Tiger is simply more fun. And that, uh, what can I say? The universe agreed. Embracing Midness saves another life. Look at that. I'll accept my draw. I am a little worried about, like, the power of scaling. Hi, Tomo! What a beautiful shop. This is everything I could have asked for. <laughs> and I got five minutes till I gotta go to the frickin' daycare, bro. We're chilling. What the heck? Their team's literally just better than mine at sniping and scaling? That hardly seems fair. That'll save us, Copium. I guess we should move Walrus to the front now. But who? it's nice to get the Hoopo Bird effect out there ASAP. Oh, that is... You put the biggest scumbag team of all time, Dylan. Welcome to the graveyard. Buffalo and Hippo? Some people have no shame. By the way, make sure to use your Twitch Prime subscription. A lot of people are going away for the holidays. I want to make sure you don't leave that juicy Twitch Prime subscription unused while you're gone. <laughs> your favorite streamer, it doesn't have to be me, <clears throat> would really appreciate... I'm just joking. Who would have thought? Embrace mid. The path to virtue is, is, is set in front of you. Hey, for now, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future. I'll see you next time. See ya!